Okay, so this is, um, it's question 17-14, and it's going to be another illustration of how we can take a complicated object and reduce it to individual components, add up those individual components, and that's going to give us uh, the total moment of inertia for the thing. So we have this wheel, and it's a hoop within a hoop, and there are eight spokes connecting it. And it gives us all our information here uh, regarding uh, how massive these pieces are. And our goal is to find the moment of inertia about the center. So it says axis perpendicular to the page and passing through point A. Okay. So the way we'll do this is in terms of finding how we go through the center, what we're going to do is we're going to say that the whole thing is made up of these individual pieces. Okay, so I1, I2, and I3, where I1 has to do with the mass of the, um, the moment, I'm sorry, the moment of inertia of the large hoop. Uh, I2 is the moment of inertia of of a spoke, one spoke, and I3 is the moment of inertia for uh, the inner spoke, inner hoop, like that, okay? So uh, let's just get to it here. We're gonna put in some numbers uh, that we need. So for I1, okay, the mass, uh, it gives us that it's 100 pounds. Now, 100 pounds isn't a mass. And so what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to go through here and say divided by G. Because 100 divided by G, I can come back later on and say G is 32.2. So I've got all these M's, and that means I'm going to have all these divided by G's in there. So I can save it to the very end and just divide by G one time. Okay, so that's my plan. The radius R1 is four feet, so we'll put a four in there, square that dude. And I did that math earlier, and what I got was 1600 over G, okay? 1600 over G. Now let's take a look at I2. For I2, we've got a rod but the rod is offset. So it's not pivoting about the end, all right? It's pivoting on here like this. So I have to use my parallel axis theorem trick, which is to say I need the moment of inertia of the rotation, of uh, the spinning, and then the moment of inertia for the rotating. So let's get to that here. So we've got one, 12 and these are 20 pounds each so I'll put 20 over G and L the length of each each of these little rods is three feet and then M2 so that's the moment of inertia about its center of mass so that's the spinning portion then I have to come along in here and do the same thing to get the orbital portion Okay, now I need the radius of orbit, and so that's going to be, it's one foot to the inside of the rod. Okay, that inner one is, is a ring of one, and then so plus halfway of the rod, which is 1.5, the rod's three, three feet. So I get that term there. Now, again, I calculated this earlier, and that gives us... 140 over G. Okay. Finally, we go back and we pick up I3. And it's just like I1, except we have to put in the, uh, the new mass, which is 15. So I've got 15 pounds over G. Uh, oops. I don't know what I'm doing with an equals there. And R3 itself is just 1. And so we get 15 over G. Okay. So uh, to package it all together and get the actual 
moment of inertia about the center of the wheel, we just get all of our parts here. And we put in our numbers. So we've got the um, 1600 over G plus eight of the, uh, the second one, 140 over G plus the very last one, which is 15 over G, okay? And again, I calculated this earlier and got, um, what did I get? There it is, 2735. over G, okay? So this might be a good time to go back in there and actually do our divide by G and see what we come up with. So I got 27.35 divided by 32.2, because we're in English units, okay, 32.2. Uh, all right, so I get 84.9. Slug feet squared. Isn't that fun? Slug feet squared. Okay. Okay, so that is the moment of inertia if the thing is spinning just around its center. Okay, just around its center. But we're asked also to find it if it's going to spin around A. Okay, so it's rolling or something like that. That's going to change the moment of inertia significantly. But all we have to do is use our parallel axis theorem, and we can see it's going to be the moment of inertia around the center, and then the orbital part or the offset part, depending on how you want to say it. Okay, so in terms of uh, about the center, um, I've already got... Uh, I'm going to say 27.35 over G plus, I've got the, I need the mass of the whole thing. All right. So that's going to be 100 plus 8 times 20 plus 15, all that over G. And then the distance from the point of interest, so the point of the axis of rotation, up to the center of mass, which in this case is 4. So we put a 4 on there and square it. Okay. Now, once we run all of those numbers, what we get is 71.35 over G. When we divide out G, then we get 221.6. And again, that's fun units of slug feet squared. Okay, piece of cake. Find I for each component, slap them all together.